what they don't tell you about teaching. Kobe! This was the point where we sort of made our first mistake. We, we were enthusiastic, we were ecstatic, and we had gotten, oh, come and pitch, come and pitch, come and pitch. But we weren't exactly clear on what to pitch for. Because see, we didn't really ask what these guys needed, what, what were their pain points, what were the problems that they needed solving. So, but like, we were really excited, we wanted these people to buy into what we were, what we could offer them because we're young, young, vibrant, extremely creative guys. So, we dove right in, started um, working on pitches, looking up their information online, and then creating a pitch deck, a wonderful pitch deck, if I might add, and um, create as in making animated work, as in going ahead to make animated work, and it was a grueling week of work, both research-wise and, and um, create content creation-wise. And um, like I said, that was a mistake on our part because the first thing that happened as we finished surviving, um, finished surviving, our car breaking down, the traffic almost missing direction, and um, all the other hiccups that we encountered that very day, almost getting, almost missing the meeting in time. Not even fin we didn't even finish the animation that we were working on. It was half baked and really, really frustrating. But after we finished going through all that, we went, you know, spirits high, pumped, got to the meeting. The guy, uh, the rep, the representative from another, a higher up representative from the team came in, and and the first thing he said was. You know, you guys, um, I was actually trying to get across to you. We could have actually had this conversation over Skype. It was at um, that point that I began to, I, oh, it was at that point that I was beginning to suspect these guys. So, but he humored us, allowed us talk, allowed us pitch, pour out our hearts, show our effort, our sweat and blood, we spilled ourselves on the floor. Then he dropped another bombshell that, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, I've seen this, some of the things that you guys have in your pitch are stuff that we are already currently working on and um, we've already contacted some people in the industry that you may even already know and uh, yeah, we could have, we, we, we meant to get, we, we could, like I said, we could have had this conversation over Skype and there would have been no need for you guys to stress yourself. So, can <laughs> you fix your mic up Okay. So, that experience, that experience really taught me a couple of lessons. One, try as much as possible to know the clients and by me, ask questions ask questions you can never go wrong by asking questions the thing was that we were asking questions we we're trying to to draw out answers squeeze out answers but another important issue was that we were asking the wrong person because we for these kind of projects it's important to to speak with somebody who is in the in, who is in what they call the C-suite as the CEO, COO, chief of something. But we were speaking to a team member who just knew that they needed um, help, but was not in was not in the he didn't really know exactly what the decision makers were planning or the help, the particular help that they needed. So we couldn't break or go beyond that guy to get the information that we needed. And that really hurt us at the end of the day. So the number one thing, the number one thing that you need to do going into every pitch is get as much information as you can. 
know the company, know the individual within that company so that you don't end up pitching stuff that they are halfway into completion doing for stuff that they don't really need. If you do that, you end up being an expense, a liability rather than a wise investment. Do, 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 do.